Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. You know those old, uh, like, westerns or any old show at all, like, 1700, not 1700s, like, 1800s? And, like, the dude's got, like, uh, all the, the, the gear on, he takes all the clothes off, and he's got, like, the long underwear on with the flap of the butt. You know what I'm talking about? I look mm-hmm. like that sitting next to her. You do know. I do, too. You know. I do, too. This glamorous queen over here. Anyway, hello. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Mm. You look wonderful, by the way. Compared to you, I'm very underdressed today. <laughs> we both look nice. Like I said. And you guys look nice, too. So I don't before- know. That guy right there is kind of... Mm, sketchy. I think some are in their pajamas still, but that's all right. She looks really good. You can wear whatever you want to while you're watching the Natasha and Debbie show. Before we get into today's episode, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. <laughs> but, <laughs> Saw someone in their underwear. Sorry, please check out our content. Make sure you want to be a part of this crazy world that we have created here. We created the world? <laughs> our world right here. It is insane. So what are we doing today? We are going to take a tour of Chatsworth House. One of the finest country houses in the English countryside. So we just did, um, last weekend, Mm -hmm. um, Village of the Dam, the haunting true story of Eam and Derbyshire. And I just happen to know based on a description that's sitting in front of my face that Chatsworth House is in Derbyshire. And it was briefly mentioned in that video too. Very briefly. Um, So if you haven't checked that video out, please go back and watch that. That was a fascinating gut-wrenching video though yeah so it was um, great to hear the story it was uh but so I, we've heard of chatsworth house i can't talk today <laughs> chatsworth house don't know anything about it i don't think we've ever seen it other than that couple seconds in that video exactly um but i want to know what this is we want to see it definitely want to see more yeah one of the finest country houses in the english countryside now that's a massive sentence right there isn't it? that is a big sentence a lot mm-hmm. to live up to yeah so does it live up to it Hopefully it does. Who lived there? I don't know. How long has it been there? These are all, we have a lot of questions. So let's find out the answers to those questions with you right now. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. This week, I am in Derbyshire, a county that I am fortunate enough to be able to call home. And as Jane Austen declared, there is no finer county in England than Derbyshire. I love Jane Austen. Mm. And today I'm going to be taking you around a place that actually has ties to Jane Austen Ooh. herself. Chatsworth House, which you can see just there in the background. It is one of the finest country houses in the whole of England. It's huge. I love the English countryside. Chatsworth House in Derbyshire is an historic English country estate that has served as the home of the Dukes of Devonshire and has seen 16 generations of the Devonshire family since the mid-16th century, including some incredibly interesting characters, such as Deborah Mitford, Kathleen Kennedy and Lady Georgiana Spencer. Kennedy. This is the Painted Hall, one of the most opulent, lavish rooms in the whole of Chatsworth House. The Painted Hall was the largest and grandest room built in the first Duke's lifetime, and it was used to welcome and impress guests. Definitely. Built between 1689 and 1694, the windows, arches, and the decoration on the walls and ceiling (laughs) are original features. What? The first duke was part of a group of nobles who invited King William and Queen Mary to take the throne. And as such, he was rewarded with the elevation from Earl to Duke. The paintings on the upper half of the walls by Louis Laguerre show scenes from the life of Julius Caesar and ancient Rome. Yeah, I can pause it for you while I'm sitting with my tongue open. I know, that's why I wanted you to pause. I'm just looking at those columns around the archway and just the detail there. It's absolutely stunning. This is insane. (laughs) It is. Like, I've seen a little bit of Buckingham Palace. Very, very little. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is this better? (laughs) This is is blowing my mind. Are you kidding me? Definitely a very good impression. First impression, anyway. It makes any, like, mansion, like, you know, people call their homes, Mm -hmm. like, even, like, celebrities, right? Look like a freaking, I don't know. I don't know. Like nothing. a joke? <laughs> exactly. Like a joke. Yes. Like this is crazy cool. Yes, it is. 
These paintings and their magnificent ceiling connected the monarchy of the time to Julius Caesar. Huh. Oh, wow. They were made with the hope that King William and Queen Mary would visit Chatsworth and be flattered by this tribute to them. I'm sure they were. I would think so. Wow. This fountain was fitted for the first duke. Very few houses at the time had running water. He had hot and cold. The duke had this fountain built on the wall beside his bathroom to show his guests that he had running water. The fountain depicts the Roman goddess Diana and her nymphs bathing. Okay. She was seen as the protector of the countryside, so her presence here is fitting. How cool is that? This is insane. You have a fountain inside your house. <laughs> Wouldn't have running water like that hot yeah. and cold back then. Welcome to the Oak Room. This room demonstrates the influence of the sixth duke on Chatsworth. Whoa. He bought the oak panelling, previously part of a German monastery, in 1837 okay. at an auction because he really liked it and thought it would be a topic of conversation for guests and visitors. And he could. There's a quote in his diary from 1844 where he writes, So inconsiderate a purchase was never made. However, look at the result. Is it not charming? Okay, there you go. I was just looking at those columns and wow, especially the other ones that had the, the vines going through it. That is just gorgeous. <laughs> I love those columns. I don't have words. Normally I do, but I, I'm just going to sit here and say wow again. <laughs> Look at that. Now the carvings, just all of it, the detail and every little bit of it. Let us know if you've been here, please. Mm. Please. I'm trying to imagine what the room would smell like, like wood and Oak. polish. The oak room? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> what discussions might be raised upon it hereafter? Whoa. Clearly quite proud of his purchase. Now this room is the chapel. Holy crap, sorry. One of my favourites. It hasn't changed much since it was built in the late 1600s for the first duke. He only had the best international and local craftsmen and artists working for wow. him. Antonio Verrio made the oil painting at the centre of the altarpiece and Louis Laguerre painted the ceiling here as he did in the painted hall that we saw earlier. <laughs> Alongside the ornate painting and artwork created for the first duke is this striking sculpture by renowned artist Damien Hirst. It's on loan at the moment and is cast in silver and plated with gold. Whoa. How cool. This isn't, the word opulent comes to mind. Mm-hmm. The history of Chatsworth begins with Elizabeth Talbot, Countess of Shrewsbury better known as Bess of Hardwick. A native of Derbyshire and from a modest background, she grew to become the second most powerful woman in Elizabethan England after Queen Elizabeth I herself. Okay. Wow. Bess married four times and it was with her second husband, Sir William Cavendish, that the Cavendish line, the Dukes of Devonshire, were established. That same family who still live at Chatsworth today. Wow. When Bess married Sir William, she persuaded him to sell the former monastic lands that he had amassed and move to her home county, Derbyshire. Despite its isolated location and the risk of flooding, they bought Chatsworth Manor for £600 in 1549. Whoa. The equivalent to about £165,000 today. Still nothing. And in 1552, they began to build the first house on this site. The only original surviving part of this first manor is the hunting tower, which was built in the 1580s and still mm. stands on the hill above Chatsworth today. That's neat. And it has now been converted into a holiday cottage for you to go and stay in. What? How cool? It wasn't until yeah. 1686 that the first Duke of Devonshire began a major rebuilding programme at the house, constructing most of what survives today. While the second and third Dukes largely left the architecture of the house alone, they amassed its huge collection of notable artwork one of the best private collections in Europe, from the ancient world. Greek and Roman sculpture to old master drawings. This is stunning. Incredible. This is stunning. That's making me happy. If you haven't been here, go. <laughs> right. Whoa. I could YouTube in that room. <laughs> yes, we could. Oh, wow. 
The detail on the frames, I mean, it's just... Here are the oak stairs, created Amazing. when the sixth duke added the north wing. This space connects the older parts of the house that we've just seen Whoa. and the more recent north wing, which was built between 1818 and 1832. Like a family album, these portraits bring together many generations of the Cavendish family, and I think it's a lovely way to display them. I feel really poor right now. <laughs> the oak stairs no. lead on to the library. The whole Chatsworth book collection contains around 40,000 different books Jeez. and over 17,000 of those volumes are in these two rooms, including a first edition of Pride and Prejudice. <gasps> nice. This is one of the most magnificent private book collections in Britain. Yeah, again, I'd say. in the world. Oh, wow. Now we enter the dining room. So I wanted to Built as part of the Six Dukes renovations, this room is still used for formal dinners. The first dinner in this room was hosted in 1832 for the then Princess Victoria, future Queen Victoria. She was just 13 and it was her first experience of a formal dinner. And I have a little fun fact for you. It can take up to 40 hours to clear and reset the table. 40, four zero. <laughs> what? No. Imagine the dishes that go along <laughs> with it. Uh, Doing the dishes, not just uh, clearing the table. I'm talking washing the dishes. But wow, look at that table. I know, I just paused in the perfect spot by accident. <clears throat> We're right now um, actually been going out and shopping and getting our Thanksgiving Day table ready. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this one. Our stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> our stuff sucks. Well, we kind of need the room to put it in. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That is about 14 of hosting your first formal dinner. 13, wasn't she? Whatever. Still, Queen Victoria in there. Um, wow. And then Incredible. 40 hours to clear. That's, what the crap? <laughs> and then I'm thinking that's one person clearing the table for 40 hours. Oh, I'm saying, no, no, that can't be right. <laughs> Maybe the clearing includes cleaning the dishes? Maybe. I don't know. I don't care. Look at this. This is so, I mean, all right, who's going to say it with me? Say it out loud to your, to your TVs or your phones. Mm -hmm. This is stupid, stupid pretty. pretty. And it definitely is stupid pretty. It's just so elegant. This is what I love about the UK. Mm -hmm. And then when I look around my house, <laughs> I'm like, we again, don't look like we poor. We poor. <laughs> we poor. We're so poor, we can't even see the R. We poor. <laughs> we poor. When we look at this. No, but seriously, like you guys do elegance. Did you create elegance? I'm going to go with I'm, you I'm did. thinking they did. I think you did. Okay. My okay. mom would have loved seeing mm -hmm. this stuff you guys i wish she was here to see it oh uh, all right sorry just had to take a minute i don't know what this was <laughs> but i'm gonna keep doing it because this is blowing my mind this place is gorgeous imagine 40 hours no, no. i'm good no oh. what the final room to see before heading into the gardens is the sculpture gallery or a sculpture the sculptures gallery sculptures displayed here include real people the Sixth Duke, Napoleon, his sister and mother, figures from mythology, Achilles, Venus, Cupid, Apollo, Artemis. The original plan was to have coloured stone walls and floor. This was abandoned after advice from artists who thought the local gritstone would make a better backdrop yes. for the white sculpture. Yeah. Oh, agree. It was also a much cheaper option. The Sixth Duke notes in his diaries, it was with mingled feelings of grief and exultation, of boundless admiration and recent bereavement that I first saw my group. The contents of this room afford me great satisfaction and pleasure. I noticed And it. are among the excuses for an extravagance <coughs> that I can neither deny nor justify, nor, when I look at Endymion, repent. Wow. What's this place worth? I don't know. More than 600 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> More than 600 million. Wow. I have finished my house tour now and I've hopped out into the garden. It's a 105 acre garden. The estate in itself is over 1800 acres. Absolutely wow. monstrous. But um, the garden for the actual property itself is 105 acres and it consists of loads of loads of uh, different what style gardens like this one behind and it That's consists it. of loads of loads of uh, different style gardens mm. like this one behind me which is quite cottagey in style mm -hmm. really, really sweet i think that is gorgeous hmm so here is one of the finest features of 
Chatsworth's gardens, the of Cascade. Course. It was the highlight of the first Duke's garden. It took 17 years and two attempts before it was finally finished. 17 years. Or 70, what should you say? Wow. What a view. What a view. What a view. And an Each plan. step is different so that the sound of the water changes as it falls. Okay. Opulent. Mm. Just off of the top of the cascade is one of my favorite parts of the garden. It's quite hidden and tucked away, but when this is in bloom, probably a few weeks ago now, it's sort of late spring when it gets in bloom, and it just becomes covered in these purple and pink flowers. It feels like you're in some sort of woodland meadow. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing. I can imagine. It's pretty amazing as it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow, what's Whoa. that? Gorgeous views. Down below, just through here, we can see there's the wall. That is where Paxton's Great Conservatory once stood. It was absolutely mammoth in size. It was the largest glass building in England. What happened to it? Um, it was completed in 1840. The only place that was bigger was the Crystal Palace in London. What happened to it? It's a shame that this glass house doesn't still survive because it was what happened to it? incredible from the photos I've seen. So during the First World War, coal was in short supply and the conservatory, unfortunately, was heated by coal. It took a lot of coal. Um, so it was left to go cold and um, oh. because of that, lots of the plants that were in there died because they were exotic. Oh. Um, so after the war, um, the Duke decided that it was quite an unnecessary extravagance in uh, the uh, period of austerity. After I don't understand time, that, but still, um, To spend it. so much money doing it up again and heating it with all the coal. So okay. he Fair. decided that it would be demolished. So in 1920, it was uh, demolished. Mm. They used 200 pounds worth of explosive to blow it up. And wow. um, yeah, it's leveled. So today it's just a nice pretty garden with a lovely maze in the middle of it. I get it, but that sucks. Had many that hours suck. of fun running around. That stinks. That is stunning. Good lord, those hedges. That is cool. It's beautiful. An understatement, my dear. It's perfect. And what a pretty day she got to film. Mm -hmm. Aww. Have you got any Jane Austen fans here? Because this is yes. where they filmed the home of Mr. Darcy. This is Pemberley House in the 2005 edition. Oh yeah. Uh, with Keira Knightley. Yeah. This is where they this is where they filmed Pemberley. Although to be perfectly honest, that wasn't my favorite version. I'm. Uh... That's the only one I've seen. My favorite. Let me know if there's any other Jane Austen fans of all of her works. Sense and Sensibility. Mm-hmm. That was a great movie. Ugh. My favorite book, <laughs> by Jane Austen. <laughs> I didn't read the book, I uh, watched the movie. <laughs> yeah, I read the book and watched the movie, but uh, the movie is hilarious. It's the first time I ever saw Hugh Laurie in anything. Mm -hmm. And then later when I watched House, I'm like, hey, he's not American. <laughs> I've seen him. <laughs> but um, love, sense, sensibility, but Pride and Prejudice was good too. We watched it together. Do you remember it? It's been a while. Long time ago. I remember a little bit of it. We'll watch it. I think we should watch it again after this. Definitely. I would, ugh. Sorry, let us know your favorite Jane Austen. Definitely much more of a fan of the old BBC series. That no, we don't get that here. Brilliant. If you haven't watched that, I would definitely recommend it. We'd have to pay to watch that one. Wow. Now we mentioned that Chatsworth had links to Jane Austen. Now, it is said that when she paid a visit to Derbyshire, she stayed in the nearby village of Bakewell, which is just over the hill from Chatsworth. Okay. We'll and during her stay, she paid a visit to Chatsworth. And after this visit, she went back to her room at the Rutland Arms where she was staying 
and made alterations to the manuscript that she was working on. Mm. And that manuscript was Pride and Prejudice. So it's believed that Jane Austen used Chatsworth House hmm. as her image for Pemberley. It's so neat. If you read in her book her description of Chatsworth, you can definitely see the striking similarities. The yeah. eye was instantly caught by Pemberley House, situated on the opposite side of the valley into which the road, into some abruptness, wound. It was a large, handsome stone building, standing well on rising ground and backed by a ridge of high, woody hills. Mm. And in front, a stream of some natural importance mm. was swelled into greater, but without any artificial appearance. Its banks were neither formal nor falsely adorned. Oh, come on. Wow. You're killing me with your beauty here. Mm. I have to pause and ask a question for you guys here. My question is this. How often do people in the UK visit places like this, especially when you live there? Mm -hmm. Is this another place you take for granted? I want to know. Good question. And if you haven't been, go. Especially yes. if you're not that far. Do it for us. Go walk around, see all these gardens. I mean, this one's completely different than the last one. And why would you not go? That's what I want to know. Why would you not? This is stunning. If this was anywhere, oh gosh, within a, what, eight, 10 hour trip, we would be there. Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, I guess that is technically if you count an airplane ride, <laughs> so I should shut up. That car ride. Uh, but no, like, let us know if you have been, like I said. Um, and uh, if you haven't, go. Please, mm -hmm. like, and then let go. us know that you went. Yeah, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool. This is insanely beautiful, and she does such great videos. She this does. is um, absolutely stunning. Wow. Exactly. Even this one tiny section of the garden yes. is huge. <laughs> you see that guy all the way at the top there? He looks tiny. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I didn't see him. I'm in love. Mm-hmm. I'm in love. The sculptures alone. Yes. Mm. Feel the warmth from being in there. Mm -hmm. We're freezing here, so. Oh, that's too pretty. Whew. These monster oh. lily pads. Birdie. Birdie. Little oh, babies. That's cool. That's cool. That's cooler. Sorry. Well, look at that. Wow. The original estate of Chatsworth was notable for its use as a prison for Mary Queen of Scots, who was kept here on several occasions between 1569 mm -hmm. and 1584. We heard that. Queen Elizabeth I appointed Bess of Hardwick, her friend, um, right. as custodian of Mary Queen of Scots, right. who was a prisoner at Chatsworth at various times. Her lodgings were on the east side of the house, where the rooms, although changed beyond recognition now, are still called the Queen of Scots apartments. I forgot about that. This curious piece of architecture here was said to have been built for Mary, Queen of Scots. That was its only purpose. That's what it was built for, so that she could come out here and take exercise in the fresh air. Wow. Whoa. Okay, I totally forgot we just learned that not long ago. Wow. The history here, come on. Look at, look at that, oh my gosh. Look at this, the history here, the incredible beauty that is Chatsworth. Stunning beauty. The grounds, the gardens, mm -hmm. um, you got the Jane Austen connection, but this is nuts. Queen Victoria connection. This house has everything. I'm in rock Everything. Blah. We've blah. only seen a tiny bit of it. Mm. I want to go here. Look at the sheep. Look at the bridge. Look at the, <laughs> the water on top of the bridge. Look at the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
looks so beautiful. It's all perfect. Hello. <laughs> We're nice Americans. We won't eat you. <laughs> They're cute. Can't eat them. Ah, sorry. What's this? What's this? It's even pretty in the rain. Mm -hmm. So while I'm here at Chatsworth, I thought I would take you around the Chatsworth Estate Villages as well. Yes, please. So Chatsworth mm -hmm. has three estate villages. Three of them. Enza, Beely, and Hillsley. So let me take you to Enza first, as that's the closest one, just Thank directly you. across from Chatsworth House. Thank you. Enza. Enza Village, beginning life long ago as a scattering of simple cottages between the River Derwent in front of Chatsworth Manor <laughs> and the house itself was relocated in 1839 and transformed into a wonderful little collection of fanciful villas set in a walled enclosure in the beautiful parkland of Chatsworth Estate. The first significant alterations to the original village were made in 1762, when the fourth Duke of Devonshire demolished several buildings that were obstructing his view of the natural parkland created for him by the famous landscape designer Capability Brown. He had determined that these houses were a bit of an eyesore for his parkland, so he got rid of them. Okay! Seventy yeah. years later, the construction of a new turnpike through the estate prompted the Sixth Duke to complete the demolition of the rest of the village before rehousing its inhabitants in a new Enza, which he had decided to build for them on a plot of land which was out of sight from Chatsworth House. The story goes that the Duke was shown a portfolio of house plans drawn up by the architect John Robertson, and asked to select his preferred design for the houses that would make up his new village. As he was too busy to make a carefully considered choice, the Duke glanced quickly through the various options presented to him and simply ordered one of each. Whether or not this account okay. is true, it is certainly the case that no two houses in Enza are the same. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I like that. That is St. Beautiful. Peter's Church here in Enza has some interesting memorials situated in the graveyard one of these, including the grave of Kathleen Kennedy, sister of President John F. Kennedy. Yeah, huh? Oh, wow. Kathleen died in an air crash in 1848, just four years after her husband, yes. the Marquess of Huntington, the oh. heir to the Devonshire dukedom, was killed in action in the Second World War. Sorry, I have an obsession with the Kennedys, and I have totally forgotten about this connection to England mm -hmm. with, him, with Kathleen. Oh my gosh, I haven't read about that. And talked like re talked about that. Whatever. Thought about that it. in yeah. forever. And I totally forgot she was buried there. And I'm pretty <coughs> sure JFK has been to her funeral or her funeral. To her grave. I know he has. Oh my gosh. I'm sure he was. That's crazy. Five months before his assassination in 1963, President Kennedy dropped by Chatsworth yep. by helicopter, as you do, <laughs> to visit his sister's grave. There's a funny quote from a local resident who was asked for his reaction to the president's visit. And he said, the wind from that machine blew my chickens away and I haven't seen them since. Oh, Quite oh comical. No. Wow, this is cool. I like the rain. I do. I live wow. here. <laughs> Honey, can we have, can we have that? <laughs> sure we can. Mm. Picturesque. Wow. It is. I want to go to England and write a romance novel now. Well, let's go. Start writing. Seriously. Just all of it's just so perfect. Perfect is the word. Well, I don't think I'm going to go do Pilsley. It's the smallest of the villages anyway. Mm -hmm. And. It's checking it down. I have honestly never known a July as wet as this. It's just been ridiculous. Every single day, it feels like in July, we have had rain. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day now and leave the video there. I hope you have enjoyed it. We have.
<laughs> right? Speechless. But we're going to find words. I'm not, I don't have any. I am. Absolutely amazing, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, perfect. I'm going to run out of words. <laughs> That was unbelievable. I mean, I, I'm just trying to think of like, well, I'm not a Duke or anybody that would live in a house like that, but I can imagine being that my home back in the 1800s or something and pulling up on a horse drawn carriage. And man, oh yeah, that's my place. And you know what? The sound of that cascade is bothering me. Redo it. <laughs> <laughs> and that that there those houses are blocking my view i can't see things take, take them down, down. <laughs> wow you guys i mean good Amazing. lord we've heard chatsworth house mentioned in comments here and there on different things the last couple of years we've been doing this mm -hmm. and again if we've seen it before i'm sorry i don't recall but uh i think i would remember this I think we would have. it's I'm emotional saying this, and I'm not one to not get emotional. You know me. <laughs> but that was perfect. Beautiful. Like you said, there's just not enough freaking adjectives. I know Shakespeare added a lot of words, but he needed to add some more on, on, mm -hmm. for beauty. Um, but uh, you can't help but see things like that in different parts of different countrysides and different places mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. And, and not understand exactly why so many amazing authors, you know, wrote yes. such incredible works. Um, and uh, it's so inspiring. You get it when you see these things. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it would feel a lot different in person to sit there and see that, and especially at a different time. But at the same time, you know, when you see these, these, mm -hmm. these, these views, you can hear the rain. You look at the sheep under the tree. You see all the different statues, the architecture. How can you not romanticize that into literature and mm -hmm. to put it pen on paper and just adore it? This was stunning. I am in awe and at the same time um, honored to to see something like this. And yeah, I'm, that's all I can say. Get to experience it this way. And we're feeling all this just from watching a video. If you can imagine being there mm -hmm. and hearing the sounds yourselves. Yep. Smelling the smells, like I've said before. Yeah. And just feeling all the energy there. Well, I'm sure people I will, imagine. Well, yeah, I totally agree yeah. with you. I'm sure people say this didn't scratch the surface, and I'm sure it didn't. Uh, but it exactly. did scratch my surface enough to <laughs> really get me going. But uh, if you guys like this episode, and I don't see how you can't. I mean, seriously, please hit that yes. like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. It helps our channel, and it helps that you get to see more content like this mm -hmm. in the future when you subscribe. And it's free. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a good start to my birthday month. It is. And um, for my birthday this year, I would like Chatsworth House. There you go. Is that when you ask me? I want Chatsworth House. <laughs> I want Chatsworth You're going to be disappointed, but maybe we could arrange a stay there. Uh -huh. Not in at the, the actual villages. house, though. But... Not in the house, but on the ground. I want to eat at that table and then watch somebody. I want to sit there for 40 hours and be like, get, it. <laughs> get every dish. <laughs> so take a nap <laughs> while you finish. No, I'm just going to be like, yeah. Oh, and the grounds were just absolutely beautiful. You could walk around there for days. Uh, literally. Uh, again, let us know if you've been. And if you haven't, go. What does that look like in Christmas? Do they do stuff? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> look at that. If there's a video on this for Christmas time, it's coming. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you guys and uh, just all the love to you for um, your support. And uh, this just made me happy. And we're going to go watch mm -hmm. Pride and Prejudice now. Seriously. Uh, Let's so do it. thank you so much. We'll see you on the next episode of the Natasha and Sexy Debbie Show. <laughs> Until then, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. See you guys. Bye.